Um, I want to introduce next the idea of what the flat seven or the minor seventh is, okay? And that is going to be one whole step behind the root. Now, on your PDF that I gave you, you're going to see that I gave you the example. In general, when you're talking about the major scale, we talk of it as being whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, where there's a half step between the seventh note in the scale and the octave, okay, which is the root again. That half step is what gives you that leading tone. Uh, that's that that's that leading tone in the key of C. It makes you it may it makes your ear say, please finish this. It's like it can't sit like that because it wants to resolve back to the root. Well, when we talk about the minor seventh or the flat seventh, that note has been lowered down a, a, a fret or a half step. Okay, so that means now, just for the sake of this note, we are a whole step behind the root. Okay, so if we take what we just learned in octaves, we have the root G to the octave G, and if we include the note that is a flat seventh or a whole step behind the root, it's that note right there. Okay, two frets behind the octave. So we'll go G, the octave G, and then go back two frets. Okay, and that's what gives you that note that makes it sound like it's in the chord of G7. Okay, so the G, the octave G, and then the whole step behind. Okay, let's just pick a different note. Let's go to C. Uh, no, let's go to F. I'm sorry. F down low, octave above, and then the whole step behind. Okay, that's your minor seventh right there, your flat seven. Let's pick another one. Let's go to A. You play A, go up an octave, and then go back two frets. That's your flat seven or your minor seven right there. Let's go to B. Play B. Play up an octave. And now include the note that is a whole step behind. And that is your minor seventh or your flat seventh. Okay? That's what's going to give you that bluesy feel behind just... You, you, you know, you can make something bluesy by adding the minor note in a major chord, or you can include that seventh note. That's what does that. That note that you're hearing that sounds goofy, that's, that's that minor seventh right now. We're just including it in the chord when I do that. When you play melodically, though, you can use that note by just adding the note one whole step behind the root. Now, you can, just for the sake of me just kind of talking right now, knowing that I didn't tell you this before, but anytime you have the note G, you could theoretically just move back two frets and play that seventh note in the bass note if you wanted. But for the sake of this exercise, uh, we're going to play the G, go up an octave, and play the note to whole step behind. Okay? So, in the exercise, what you would do is you'd play uh, the root, the octave, and the whole step behind for that whole thing. Okay? Now, with that exercise, I think it's going to actually move a little funny. We actually might want to get used to going this fast. Okay? So just get used to playing that anywhere you want. One. And the reason you want to do that is because remember there's only one measure on the five chord and then one measure on the four, so it may not move fast enough. Where you would go, by the time we got to the D, we'd go. So we don't want to be moving too slowly. I would get used to playing it that fast. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then maybe play that with the recording. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now the four chord. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Back to the root. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Here's the tricky part. Five, four. Now back to one. So as long as you can do that, I would say maybe get yourself to that point and then start adding it in with, with the jam track. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. Let me stop you right there. Okay, one other thing I want to show you real quick is including the octave when you're playing the riff we've been doing the last couple of weeks. So, starting in G, just play it normally like you have been. When you get the four chord, back 
to one. Five chord. Four chord. Now here's the tricky part, okay? Knowing where the octave is, I want you to go to that higher G at this point and play the, the last measure on the higher G here. Okay? So you're starting on the G here and you're ending on this G here. Alright, that's what I want you to work on, okay? It's a little bit of a little bit of uh, incorporating the riff we already have, plus talking about octaves and being able to find that octave whenever you need to. Um, and then also being able to play the flat seven with the other exercise. Okay, let me know if you have any questions.